Today I'm going to walk through some of the features that make Forecast Watch a great tool for meteorologists to monitor, assess, and verify their forecasts. They use it to monitor their forecasts and benchmark them with publicly available forecasts. Forecast Watch also provides valuable information used to improve forecast systems. I can't show you all of the useful features of Forecast Watch in this video, but I hope to give you a taste of what's possible. We're logging in today as if we were a meteorologist at the National Weather Service and we're looking at forecasts within the National Digital Forecast Database. Once we log into the system, we're presented with a list of the Forecast Watch applications we're subscribing to. Let's look at detailed drill downs. There are four main components to the drill down page, the menu, the map, the summary table, and the drill down table. There are a lot of features that give meteorologists tremendous insight. Today we're going to walk through one scenario that touches on many of the features of Forecast Watch. The menu is up top, and not only does it tell us what we are looking at, it also allows us to change what we are looking at. In this case, we're looking at the United States one day out afternoon high temperatures for April 2011. We're going to switch to MOS high because the MOS high, or 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. local time high, is what the National Weather Service predicts. On the map, you can see at a glance how our forecast performed for the month. Blue areas are areas of under prediction of high temperature. That is, our forecast was generally lower than the actual high. Red areas are areas of over prediction, or areas where our high temperature forecast was too high on average. Looking at the summary table for the entire United States, you can see that the NDFD performed well for this measure. Absolute error was 2.72 degrees Fahrenheit, and nearly 72% of forecasts were within 3 degrees. We also had the least under forecast. Our worst under forecast was 19 degrees Fahrenheit less than what actually occurred. However, we didn't have the least over forecast. It was all pretty close, but we had a forecast during the month that was 23 degrees too high. We'll take a look at that again in a second. The last table is the drill down table. It shows only our forecasts for the next level down, in this case states. It shows the same statistics as the summary table. Both this table and the summary table are sortable. Just click on the header of the column you want to sort. Let's try to find out what state our 23 degree over forecast was in. We click on the column max. The first sort is always lowest to highest, but if we click again, it will reverse the sort. Here we can see that the over forecast was in South Dakota. We can click on a state to show statistics for only that state. You can tell in the breadcrumb bar that we're now looking at South Dakota. The menu and overview map are the same, but our summary and drill down tables have changed. The drill down table now shows cities in South Dakota that Forecast Watch monitors. Clicking on Max again, remember twice, to get high to low sort, we can see that our over forecast occurred in Phillip, South Dakota. Let's click on Philip to get one level deeper. The summary table now shows the comparison for forecasts just for Philip. It looks like many of the other providers had their worst over forecast in Philip too, if you'll recall the numbers on the national overview. But this is not as far as we can go. We still want to determine when the over forecast occurred. Let's click on details page. The details page takes us to a day-by-day -day summary of MOS high temperature forecast performance for just Philip, South Dakota for April 2011. The first graph compares one day out forecasts versus observations. The purple line is the forecast while the red line is the observation. It tracks pretty well with a few notable exceptions. We can see the forecast performance on the bar graph below which plots forecast error. The month started and ended well but there are two obvious over forecasts and one notable under forecast. By mousing over the over forecasts, you can see that our 23 degree over forecast occurred on April 17th and then was followed by a large under forecast. You can move up to the forecast observation graph to see the change visually. Or looking at the table for April 17th, you can see that the forecast was for 54 degrees but it actually only reached 31. Our overnight low temperature forecast was also too high. It was for 35 degrees, but it actually was only 23 degrees. The Dakotas is one of the hardest locations to forecast temperature because they tend to be a battleground for cold and warm fronts, and that means you have far less room for error. If a front moves just a few tens or hundred of miles differently than our forecast, that could mean unexpected wild swings in temperature. That's probably what happened here. It's great that we can pin it to a specific date. 
take a look at the surface map for April 17, 2011. Philip is sitting in the southwestern part of South Dakota, and you can see that it's sitting on the morning of April 17, just north and east of a long stationary front, where cold and warm air are battling it out. The forecast probably expected that front to form just north and east of Philip, meaning the city would be on the warm side of the front. On that day, cold air won the Battle of the Dakotas. We can use this information to improve our models, educate our meteorologists, understand where our models perform better or worse, and to communicate to our customers when our forecasts can be more relied on or when we are more uncertain. Let's go back and use the Trends product to see how our forecasts have been doing in Philip and see how things have been looking over time. We'll click on the product menu to return to the list of products and click Trends. This product works just like the drill down products. It starts with a national overview of the statistic you're interested in and you can dive right down to the state and city level. Let's go to Philip, South Dakota first. We'll scroll down to the bottom to select South Dakota from the list of states and then we'll scroll down again to select just Philip. Like the drill down product, there is a menu at the top. Again, let's select MOS High. The specific metric graphed is average error, which is the bias of the forecast. The first graph is the performance of our forecasts with respect to that metric for the past five years. Our forecast is highlighted and it tends to hover around a bias of zero, which is what we would expect. The second graph shows performance over the past year and is just the zoomed in portion of the five year graph highlighted in yellow. The last graph shows performance of the forecast for the selected month, in this case April 2011, over days out, with the selected day out highlighted. At a glance, everything looks good. This demonstration shows some of the many features of Forecast Watch and how it can be used as a powerful tool for meteorologists to understand and improve their forecasts. If you'd like further information or to arrange a live demo, contact Eric Flair by filling out your information on this page or by emailing info at forecastwatch.com.